Uh, we have with us uh, Bob Rosencrantz, who is international president of Amica, Automatic Musical Instrument Collectors Association, and Mr. Robert Armbruster, who is, of course, a very distinguished player, a piano player himself, and has cut many, many reproducing roles in the past, and I'm sure that uh, the members of Amica would uh, enjoy a few words from uh, Mr. Armbruster and hear a few of his experiences. Uh, where, where did you actually get started in uh, cutting roles, Mr. Armbruster? Well, actually, I went to New York to visit my mother's cousin, and I was in my first long trousers, and these were the days when kids didn't wear long trousers until about 16 way back. And uh, I had the effrontery to go into the alien company, go up and say, I'd like to make dual art records. And I think when they recovered for the shock, they, from the shock, they said, play something. So I played that little rondo by uh, Dvorak, or Dryshock. Which one is it? No, it's Dryshock, I guess, the lesser known composer. And uh, Mr. Woods liked it. He called in someone else and they said, play something else. And I finally wound up by making six dual art rolls, for which I received sixty dollars, ten dollars a roll. And I went back to Philadelphia, and I was the richest kid on the block. And that was the start. Did you and, get a new pair of long pants in that, that yeah, stage? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. And that was the same period that I got. I was at West Philly High, and they got a letter from White, the White House in Washington to play at the diplomatic diplomatic dinner. And uh, naturally, I accepted. So then I rushed to Browning King's, which is probably out of business. He got a $25 tuxedo. This was right. a big step forward. Right. And played the uh, Liz Tarantella at the diplomatic dinner in the White House. And uh, I'm going to play that, incidentally, Monday night. I'll stick my neck out. It's a right. bravura piece. And I might add that uh, this dinner looked like the second act of a musical comedy. Everybody in full dress coats and colors with ribbons and medals and everything, except that the poor Americans all looked like the waiters. And they were all in black and white, including me, and I played it. The loud, loud piece of music, and I won't mention any names. One of our highest officers in our government, I could see him right through the piano, slept peacefully through my entire piece. Oh, boy. This is pretty, dis pretty discouraging. You know? <laughs> Did you go over and wake him up? No, but I received what you might call a sitting ovation. <laughs> Well played. Yeah, yeah. mm -hmm. Very well played. It went very well. I talked to the president, got the medal, and it was a good ad for West Philadelphia High School. And it got me in right with the, the boys and the principal. And I used to play sometimes in the morning there. It made me very sense, very hot, popular because I would play something very long, and that would go into the first period. You see, so okay. <laughs> they didn't have right. to go in. So that's the greatest ready-made audience in the world. If you can keep a bunch of high school kids from having to go to class. You can get encore after encore after encore, as long as you keep playing it. Didn't, didn't you tell us a little bit earlier that uh, you uh, played for Mussolini? Yeah. Uh, Mussolini apparently played the violin. Whether he played well or badly, nobody knows. He's like Thomas Jefferson who played the violin, but nobody ever mentioned whether they enjoyed it. They enjoyed it. They just said he played, period. So Mussolini was apparently in a position, this is pure conjecture on my part, he didn't want a live accompanist because the live accompanist could go out unless he was shot on the way out and say maybe Il Duce doesn't play in tune you know, or some such remark. So he bought a dual horn. Now why this was not done by London I can't tell you but I got the job of making the accompaniments for Mussolini's violin playing. So he sent a list of numbers over things that uh, things like the souvenir dirle and that type of thing. So I got records by the best violinist, Chrysler Heifetz, and you get the tempi, you get interpretations that were standard. And then I made at least a dozen, possibly more records, and sent them over to Italy. Beautifully signed, you know, to Il Duce with greatest admiration and so forth. Robert Anderson. I at least expected to get an autograph. But you did. Never no. got an autograph. But at least I was his accompanist for Where a while. Good. Yeah. good. Didn't yeah. you speak Italian? Um, only enough to get by in the restaurant. Yeah, that's all. Yeah. I think one interesting thing, Bob, that you mentioned that might be of interest to the club was this uh, making roles under different names, the pseudonyms, if it's a policy of yeah, well, the number of the roles. Well, it happened. You see, when I went to uh, Alien and worked under contract, 
and I have charge of the rolls. <coughs> if they put my name on every roll, the, the catalog would be loaded with me, the monthly bulletin would be loaded with me, so I, I invented a couple of people for certain types of roles. I invented Henri Bergman, which sounds very elegant. Bergman's my wife's maiden name at the time, and uh, he he did all very, very sentimental ballads. Then my middle name is Summers, so I invented another guy named Robert Summers, who really did awful slushy sentimental things and religious works. And, and I saved the best pieces right. for my name. <laughs> well, good for you. Naturally. You had another one there, didn't you, too? And Gene Waldron? Waldron, yeah. That, that was a, my secretary's boyfriend. Oh. Yeah, he didn't seem to mind, so... What kind of music did that. you play I, fr I guess we. I guess he got whatever was left. <laughs> And then I understand that when they uh, transferred these roles to, mel roles to melody roles, they gave me four more names. Really? Yeah, so those I've never found out about. Well, that's a very interesting. So they gave me eight aliases, seven aliases, rather, in my own name. Well, uh, Mr. Arm Brewster, yeah. I'm sure that the, the Amicans uh, are very, very grateful to you for all the fine music you have produced for them, and we are looking forward to your concert. Well, it's fun to do, and it's, I was telling Bob, it, since I retired, of course, and I was a conductor for all these years, and not playing because of my small hands, and I haven't played the piano since last April a year ago, and he told busy, me, and ham that I am, I said, yes, I will play. Beautiful. It's just word. exactly like a baseball pitcher who's been retired, and you call him up and say, would you mind coming up? It's coming to Philadelphia and pitching one game. <laughs> In the World Series, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no less. yeah. Thanks well, very right. much, Mr. Arnold. Yeah. Very glad to have had you here. We're glad to have you back in Philadelphia. Yeah. The next Philadelphia boy. Yeah.